different formulas. This is also, if you see, this is in our green bottle. This is our body shop line. And this is a product that's actually safe for fresh paint. So it does include some Montan wax for protection, but it won't do anything to cause fresh paint to reach full cure. Uh, all the solvents will continue to outgas. It'll completely harden. So it is a body shop uh, product. This is a consumer product or a professional detailer product. Now the primary benefit to an AIO or all in one, in the old days, Ansu, we called it a cleaner wax, um, is it, it enables you to uh, work the product like a compound to remove defects work the product like a polish to create amazing gloss and clarity and of course it leaves behind some protection so it does three things in one step and um, the 3d products are actually remarkable in the fact that their abrasive technology is so good and that's one of the things that i really like about 3d products is unlike most companies is 3d makes their own abrasive powders that's the term powders um, they start with raw materials and convert them and then take the converted raw material and turn it into the finished product. It's a very long process. The manufacturing plant is located in Santa Clarita, California. And uh, it, it's just one of the things that's really nice to work for a company that actually makes their own products versus there's so many marketing uh, companies out there that buy from other companies and slap their label on it. But that's not what you get when you buy 3D we are the direct manufacturer of all of our complete product line. So what we have here today, this is, uh, this is a 2006 Lincoln Town Car. Um, we met the owner, he works into a shop that's next to ours, so it's pretty easy to not, it was easy to not notice his car because it's so neglected. Um, I asked him this morning how many miles are on this. He says close to 600,000 miles. It's on Just its one or two. <laughs> 600,000 miles. It's on its third engine. And one of the things I've always noticed about these Lincoln Town Cars is you just can't kill them. You know? Well, I, obviously not. It's 6,000 miles. Things on the road. Now, the guy that owns this is a machinist, a CNC machinist, and also a welder. I wouldn't say he's a car guy from the looks of this finish. This is fairly neglected. The wheels, the headlights are, but that makes it a great canvas to show what kind of results you can get by doing just one step. Now over there, I have the traditional three-step approach. So I have a compound, a polish, and a non-cleaning wax, a finishing wax. So I have the 510 premium rubbing compound, the 520 finishing polish, and the epoxy, which is a non-cleaning or what I call a finishing or a show car wax. So, I'm actually going to start over there and show you what a three-step process looks like and how long that takes. And then I'm going to show you, you can get dang near the same results using a quality AIO. Uh, Yancy, did you have some input there? No, here, look at that camera right okay. there. All right, so there, that's camera one okay, camera over one. here, camera one, camera two, and that one, which I have to still put on, is going to be camera three. So. Once you start talking with that one, and uh, we will get this ball of rolling, because okay, you're about so, ready to start demoing, right? Yeah, before I demonstrate, I just want to uh, kind of just talk about when you would use one process over the other. So with a conventional three-step approach, um, anytime you use a dedicated product, so a dedicated compound, it's all as far as removing serious defects, followed by a dedicated polish, its full goal is to create amazing gloss and clarity, clean up any haze left over from the first process, and then a dedicated finishing wax, is when you, when, you do, when you break the process up into dedicated steps using dedicated focused products, you will get better results. It will take more time, but you'll get better results. Um, for some of your customers, if you detail for money, they may want the best results they can get and they're willing to pay for the extra time it'll take to do each one of these steps. There are always going to be customers and perhaps for your own cars or motorhomes where you don't want to do three steps. You want to do everything in one step. And that's where these AIOs, the speed and the, um, the correction glaze come into play. You can get dang near as good a results as a dedicated multiple three step approach but do it in one step. And of course, one thing that everybody loves about 3D products is all of them wipe off zero dusting. And you'll see that today on this black paint. So Yancy, I'm gonna step over here and fire right. up a buffer. I am coming out. We are going mobile. Okay. 
So I've already used the waterless wash on this paint, and you can see there are some rock chips, you know, I can actually see a lot of uh, defects in here that only a paint job would fix. Wouldn't you give me, do uh, you got a scroll finder light on you? I have one over here, I believe. All right. Okay, I got the one I don't, oh, here's the one I like. That way I can light it up and show them. Okay, so. All right, there we go. So it's just dull and oxidized. You know, um, it actually almost looks blue, but the paint is actually black. It just has so much oxidation, it's kind of muting that black color. Uh, uh, the thing I wanted to point out about this paint, though, is, you know, to get this thing perfect, you'd have to give it a paint job. And a lot of people that own cars that are this old, it's not worth the money to them to invest in a paint job. So this is where, you know, just to polish out whatever is left of the paint, at least the car will be shiny and look good going down the road versus the way it looks right now. So what I have here is I've got a Flex PE14 with the wool pad, right. and then I've got a cordless uh, beast. This is the C beast, the cordless beast, eight millimeter <laughs> gear driven. And I have, this is my cutting pad for the compound, this is my polishing pad for the polish, and this is a soft black foam finishing pad to, to machine apply the epoxy wax. So this is a three-step process. So let me go ahead and just start. So this is what people would be doing opposed to using a one-step. They would be having to do... This is a traditional multiple-step process. Yeah, let's just um, make sure, because everybody's here for the one-step, so yeah. let's clarify Okay, so that. this is, and this is just to kind of show you how many steps it would take using a conventional process. So let me go ahead and I'll just... Uh, Not get the camera. Okay, so let me pick up my bead, spread my product out, bring my speed up a little bit. Okay, and you know, see, I'm just going to do this top half here. I'm okay. not going to try to do the whole hood. And we just got all the dust bunnies out from your class. And you know we've got a class coming up, Yancy. Yeah, wait, yeah, wait until after you're done with the polisher. Where I'm going to be covering all these topics. Okay, I've gone over this section three times. Which nope. I already can see the gloss coming back, which was a large. And I'm just going to do a con uh, traditional eight section pass. So here's the fourth time I've went over this section. And I've kind of used up all the product there and what happens is when you start out with a dry pad and very dry paint, the paint tries to absorb some of the product but so does the pad. So I'm gonna put some more product down here. All right, I'm just this will just help me to finish this. Slide over here real quick. Okay, you always wanna see a film of product on the surface when you're working. So that film is not only lubrication, it's also the abrasive. Okay. Okay, so this is my fifth time I went over that section. This is six. I'm gonna go to eight. It's just a good general rule of thumb kind of number. You know, I know that making one or two passes isn't gonna remove all this oxidation, but I know I don't need to make 20. So that was, what was that, seven? That was seven? That's <laughs> why I count everything out loud. Okay, and do you notice anything about the product on the surface there, Yancy? That, the, that it's getting shiny. And there's the no product? There's no dust. Yeah, there's no dust. Okay. Have I think all that dust that we do see on the hood is from the pad being... Uh, yeah, a little bit of lint pad. coming off the pad. Okay. Okay, so there's the first step in a multiple step process. And that has completely removed the oxidation. And restore a lot of gloss and clarity. Where's um, your light? Of course, it also leaves holograms. Anytime you use a wool pad. All right, now come down towards me. Anytime you use a wool pad on a rotary, the fibers themselves put their own cut in the paint. All right, hold on one sec. Right there. Now come down. Keep coming. All right, there's the before. You can see that it looks like a grayish Chalkboard. blue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now go back. And look. 
It actually is black. It's black. But there is a bunch of rock chips and everything going on, so the, that's what the little divots that you're seeing in that paint. This paint's hammered. Okay, so anyway, so the fibers themselves are abrasives. And this is, this is why we use wool pad for heavy cutting, because not only do you have the abrasives and the compound working for you, you have the fibers of the wool pad. The same thing, by the way, applies when you're using microfiber pads on orbital polishers. And this is the reason why you can't always finish out the microfiber paint, because the fibers on a microfiber pad are cutting the paint just like they are here, and it tends to leave micro marring when you use an orbital. And that is a form of abrasive, right? It's a form of abrasive. And if you look with foam, you have a uniform surface texture, so you get away from the individual fibers. Okay, so this is a light purple foam polishing pad. Okay, so we're done with step one. <laughs> done with step, step one. Process. So here's step two. So now we're gonna pull out the holograms, polish to a high gloss. This is the 520 finishing polish. Okay, and the first one that we used was the 510. Yep. Right. Okay, so I always like to spread my product out first. Just do that quickly to get the product spread out. Okay, so now back to a uniform layer of abrasives and lubrication. Turn this up to the high speed. I'm gonna put a little pressure down here. And I'll just do like six overlapping section passes. And I always like to count these out loud. That way I don't lose track of where I'm at. So there's and, one. And trust me, people, he does. I'll be in my office and I'll hear him counting. Out counting there over and over again. Well, what happens is this, your mind wanders and you forget where you're at. There's two. Or you're simple-minded. It'll ah! just end up taking you longer to detail the car. So if you count where you're at, you always know what you've done and what you still have to do. So there's three. No, that's a good tip, a very good technique. It'll cut an hour out of your buffing time, counting out your strokes. Is that four? Yes. <laughs> Five. And there's six. Are you only doing six? Uh, yeah, I don't, at this point all I need to do is make sure the holograms are removed. I don't have to remove any oxidation. The wool pad and the compound did that for okay. me. Okay, so then, and look how, look how oily and non-dusty the 520 is. It's very nice. And it has a long work time? Oh, yeah, super long buffing cycle. Um, two inch calls that open time. Open time. It's open time. Uh, the first time you used the term, I never used it. I always refer to it as the buffing cycle. Okay, so there we go. Whoa, man, look at the reflection. Yeah, so it's uh, totally cleared up. All the holograms are gone. You want to show that with the light? Yeah. No holograms. All right, now come down towards me. There's like cracks in the paint. That's probably from the heat of the engine. This is a 2006, so if we do our math, what is that, 18 16, years old? 18, 16. My daughter's not here, she's a math whiz, not me. <laughs> okay, then the, the third step in a three-step process would be to put the wax on. So this Which is, is to the 3D. Seal it. What's that? To seal it. Yeah, to seal the surface. Everything we use so far is body shop safe, it's water soluble. Uh, it would not hold up to inclement weather or repeated rain. So there's some wax, and for this I'm just gonna, Put down nice even layer. Usually when I'm machine applying a wax, I like to go over the surface two or three times just to make sure I've got good coverage over every square inch. And you're not pushing hard. No, I'm not pushing the hard. The hard stuff's already done. Hard stuff's are done, yeah. I always notice I uh, have a few people that are on the detailing forum, detailing society forum, where they're like, yeah, when I go to do my wax, you know. I will put some, I see that there's scratches and stuff in it. And it's like, well, how hard are you pushing on it? Oh, I'm still pushing the same hardness as I do with my polishing and my cutting. Yeah, wrong. No, yeah. no. Okay, so this needs to dry. Well, let's dry and let me show you how fast you can do the same thing using a quality AIO. All right. Okay, so. And everyone out there that is posting comments and stuff right now, I promise I will get to your questions and answers and all of your comments here shortly. Just right now, I am running the camera. So. Okay, you know, um, normally for doing um, daily drivers like this, I tend to grab speed because I know there's a lot of interest in 505. I'm gonna go ahead and use the 505. Okay, let me this, get the bottles on here. 
Okay. Right. Again, this has, this has more correction ability than the speed. Okay, that's the primary difference. And uh, they both use Montan wax, but they're gonna do everything I did over there in three steps in one step. For this, I'm using the Beast. This is the original Beast, you can tell by the aluminum head. Again, this is just a foam polishing pad. And what I really like about this product here is the groovy green color. Groovy. Okay. Hey, all you cool kids. Now, if you look, I'm using quite a bit of product here. Yes, you and are. You're not using three pea size, size drops. drops. Okay, <laughs> so now, th this is one thing people got to learn about using an AIO on neglected paint. When you're, when you're doing this type of work, you want to use your AIO like a compound. So you want plenty of lubrication, plenty of braces down there working for you. Now, you could use this for a maintenance product. So say you have a daily driver that looked like this, you buffed it out. But once, maybe once or twice a year, you want to rebuff it out to freshen it up. Then you could go down to a lot less product because you're not working on such neglected paint. But again, this dry old paint's gonna absorb some of the product, the pad's gonna absorb some of the product, and I need a film of lubrication and a film of abrasives down here working for me. Okay. So I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna spread my product out, then I'll do eight solid section passes. <laughs> Okay, that wasn't how I buff out a car. That's just getting the product spread out. Now look, I got this nice film of abrasives and lubrication working for me. Now I'm gonna slow down, I'm gonna push hard, I'm bumping this up to the six setting. Eight solid section passes, I'll count them out loud. You know, this product's working so good, how about I just do six? You do you, man. Hey, we're showing the power of the one step, so. Okay, there's six solid section now, passes. Now, all you that are watching, you notice how fast he just did that. All right, and if you want, go back, rewind, see how long it took for the three-step <laughs> process. Yeah, okay, so now, normally, you wanna let your waxes dry, and the cool thing about the Speed and the 505, and even the Poxy, is if you let them completely dry, they will wipe off even easier than if they're still a little bit wet. And how did you find that out? Uh, uh, by detailing, oh, uh, there was a time where, uh, uh, I had to leave and I didn't have, I, I, a family emergency came up, so I had to leave. I had this whole car wax and I was worried about it wiping off hard the next day I came back in. It wiped off so easy, so no fear. In fact, my normal process when I use a one step and do a car is I'll do the entire car, then come back and wipe it off. And the benefit to that, besides it wiping off easy, is you can see where, see where you've been. You've been. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so just a good towel wiping techniques. Look how easy this wipes off. I could have probably stopped after three passes. Look at the results from that. Let me come over there and wipe off the other side. All right, well then when you do that, you're gonna grab your light. I'm gonna just show you guys the reflection. And that is the difference between a three-step and a one-step. So results on both look amazing, okay? Yeah. But the difference is the time factor. Yeah, do you wanna be there all day or do you wanna get in and out? And the other thing is, is you know, if you got a customer that doesn't want to spend a lot of money, you don't want to do a three-step. That's, you know, every time you do a step of the car, you're talking about hours on a full-size car. Uh, to go around this car for me and just do the compounding step with a wool pad and an aggressive compound like the 510 there. Um, it's a big car. <laughs> it's a big car. Three to four hours. Maybe three to four hours. I'd be yeah. right into the That's four. just the compounding. Uh, just the compound. Now i got to wipe it off, come back and polish it, then i got to come back and put the wax on. So you're talking about an eight-hour day, besides washing wheels and tires and clay and all that good stuff. So 
it, it's okay if that's what the customer wants because they want that ultimate show car finish. They want they as charge many, for it. Yeah, they want as many defects removed as possible. So that's where a dedicated compounding step would come in and remove the most defects. But if a customer doesn't want to pay a ton of money, but they still want high quality results, one step. Or think about it this way, not just if you're professional, but if you're actually a home user and you're trying to make your car this way, do you want to spend it all day and buying all the products, which we'll gladly sell you, don't get me wrong, <laughs> or do you want to be in and out and take the wife out so you're, she's not yelling at you? Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> true. You know, another good uh, benefit or another good use for these products over here, the speed and the correction glaze. Oh, you never did the, um, the light. light? Yeah, well, there's nothing to see, really. So. Well, no, I want to show the... Okay, so... But the other benefit is, is uh, I have a lot of friends that buy these, uh, the, the speed pr primarily. Okay. All right, so this is the three-step process. No swirls, no hall grams. There's a lot of paint pits and stuff. All right. Yeah, now, the, again, the, the heat now, from the hoods, this thing's old. It's starting to Now, will you up. go up here? Show them the, the before. Oh, sure. Uh, you got to turn the light on. All right, now come down. All right, there's the before. All right, now I'm going to follow you. There's the after. Okay, now let's do the same thing, only on the other side. Show you how comparable that really is. All right, the before. Okay, and go. And after. All right, now can you guys, if you guys want, stop the frame, go back a couple, and actually look and see. Can you tell the difference between the three step and the one step? No, not in this case. That's the power of a <laughs> one step. Yeah, so I have a lot of people that buy this product um, for doing RVs. Yeah, that'd be perfect. Boats. They're huge RVs, especially high end RVs, because they have a base coat, clear coat finish. And when you're working on an RV, say a 40 foot RV, that's 40 feet down one side, 40 feet down the other side, plus you got the front and back caps. And above all, you've got to be using great abrasive technology. The last thing you want to do is use any kind of product that has poor quality abrasive technology that micromars the finish, a clear coat on a 40 foot motorhome, and then you have to go back and do the whole thing over again. So just start out using products that have known good abrasive technology. But anyway, that's the difference. There's one step. And uh, real quick, I also wanted to talk about pads. Okay. Okay, so for this, I used a foam polishing pad. This is a, in the 3D line, this dark purple is foam cutting, this light purple is foam polishing, and this black pad is foam finishing. And a lot of times when you're doing a one step, if the entire idea is to do it in one step, then you always wanna make sure you do a test spot first and test a polishing pad. You wanna be able to do most cars with a polishing pad. Finishing pad's gonna to be too soft, cutting pad is gonna to be too aggressive, and the, cut, the pad itself can leave a DA haze, micromarring. Um, so on harder paints, it won't be a problem, but on medium soft paints, you know, the, the pad itself may leave a haze. So always do a test spot and try to dial in a process where you only have to go around the car once if that is in fact the goal. Because here's what I see a lot of guys do on Facebook. They always tell people to grab an AIO and use a foam cutting pad or a microfiber pad on DA. The problem with that is, is if it ends up micromarring the paint, you have to go around the car a second time to remove the micromarring. The one step is no longer one step, it's a two step. And when you're dealing with customers, you know, uh, what, what, what guys are, what people are trying to do when they're using an aggressive pad is they're trying to get the most defects out of the car and that's noble. Get, but keep in mind, if a customer, if this, if you're detailing for money, a customer's paying you to do a one step, you should have never promised to remove all the swirls and scratches in the first place. That's an aggressive compound and doing at least two steps. When you're doing one step, you say, hey, I'm gonna go around the car one time using a foam polishing pad and a great AI, AIO. And you know, what I get is what, what we get, you know? And if the customer wants more, always be happy to do more, but it's at a higher price point because it's gonna take longer. Yeah. So and then also you can uh, just, want to mention too is like say you are a DIYer and you do have some deeper scratches and stuff in there you can always for that area jump up to a heavier oh, cut yeah. pad yeah, yeah. work those areas then go back to a different pad still yeah. using the one product and getting it all done at one time yeah. correct so yeah recently I detailed a, a 1964 Chevy Impala it's a show card it's all this car does is go to shows 
and uh, we used the speed on the entire car, and after we used the speed, there was a few deeper scratches that stood out like a sore thumb. So I grabbed the 510 wool pad on a rotary, and I just, I walked around the car, and I just put a little strip of the 510 wherever the deep scratches were, buffed them with the wool pad and rotary, came back and cleaned it up with the speed again, just to make sure there's no holograms. But that's another way to take out just the deeper scratches, that the things that weren't removed by the one step. Okay. So. All right, well, let me go back over here. So, oh, let me, hey, real quick, while I'm walking around. Yeah. As you can see, this is our new studio. If you haven't seen pictures and posts or anything of it yet, this is where all the detailing classes, which Mike, you can start talking about your detailing class. Oh, sure, yeah. Um, uh, we teach detailing classes here, and the one that I have coming up um, in about two weeks is, um, it's a three-day class. The first day is a very intense day, because I know everybody's kind of amped up. They have a lot of I'm energy. I'm going to show them down here, so you just keep talking. Yeah, so the first day is uh, paint correction. You know, everybody wants to learn paint correction and ceramic coating, so we cover that in depth. But we actually go a step beyond. So the first two cars we'll do on Friday, we do multiple step paint correction. So it's kind of like that, only instead of using the wax, we're gonna install a ceramic coating. So we're gonna take two cars, in this case it's two Camaros, a 1968 Camaro and a 2013 Camaro. Both have horrendous rolls of scratches. So we're gonna compound and polish and put a coating on. So that's multiple step paint correction and ceramic coatings. After we those two cars, we're gonna do two more cars. Only now, I brought in cars that have nicer finishes. Um, and so we're gonna learn how to do one-step paint correction. And that's gonna be using a product called 3D1. It's a hybrid compound polish, so it has the ability to take out a lot of deep swirls and scratches with an aggressive pad, or you can use it with a softer foam polishing pad for light defect removal. But for those who cars, it's a, nine, it's a 2020 C8 Corvette and a 2003 Corvette. And we're gonna do one step paint correction and then we're gonna do ceramic coatings. There's also a 1933 Ford three window coupe for that, that session of the class. And then at the end of Friday, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do production detailing on two more cars in really bad shape. So on Friday alone, you will detail seven cars, learn three different techniques. Saturday, we move over to something completely different. Now we're gonna learn the 3D dry sanding system. And for this, I always bring in muscle cars because that's the kind of car that actually gets a custom paint job. Most people shouldn't be out there sanding the factory paint on their car because the factory paint is thinner than a post-it note, okay? So the cars that actually get sanded are custom cars with custom paint jobs. The painter puts more paint on, therefore there's some paint there to sand and buff to get a true show car finish. So Saturday I bring in a couple of real muscle cars with fresh paint jobs. We learn how to use the 3D dry sanding system. Then we switch over to rotary polishers. Everybody gets a lot of time learning how to use the rotary to pull out 100% of their sanding marks. Then we go back to orbital polishers to finish out swirl free, and then we'll put ceramic coatings on those two cars. So by the time Saturday's over, you've buffed out nine cars and learned multiple techniques, including glass polishing, engine detailing, headlight correction, pretty much everything on the outside of the car. Then Sunday, we switch over to boat detailing. And I think I'm the only guy in the industry that does this, but I bring in incredibly large boats in really bad condition so I could show you everything. If I brought in a new boat, I could show you how to use a spray detailer. So I don't, I purposely, I have great contacts in the industry. I bring in really bad boats and that way I can teach you the complete process. And what that means is when you leave here, you'll be able to look at a boat and diagnose how bad it is and only use the steps you need to get it back to factory new. In some cases, you'll have to do all the steps that you learn in the class, but in some cases it might be as simple as a light polish and then whatever you wanna do, a boat wax or a ceramic coating. But the classes are very intense. They're all hands-on. I start them at 7.30 sharp. There's really no breaks except for the lunch break and it's only about 15 minutes because we cover so much technique. Um, there are no chairs in any of my classes. You know, I, I always find- You mean people, that there is no chairs. Yeah, I find people learn better when I show them how to do something than put the tools in their hands and let them work on a real car. Um, to, to have you sit in a chair and as I like to say, look at the wall, which means look at a PowerPoint while someone talks, you can learn that way too. I'm just find that people that gravitate towards car and bow detailing tend to be the people that learn better by doing versus just looking at the wall. 
So uh, over the years, I've, uh, I started out, you know, see, teaching, uh, I had a PowerPoint that had 256 slides. By the, and it was great stuff, you know, shows a picture of a tool, shows a picture of a product, talk, 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 talk. But by the time we get through the PowerPoint, you know, everybody's falling asleep and no, nothing got done. So I just got rid of the PowerPoint. Now it's just working on cars. All right, I'm bringing me up in here. And the reason why I'm bringing me myself up in here is, let me make sure I can hear myself. Uh, the thing you didn't talk about. What's that? Which is the big thing that we got going on. Our world tour that we're doing this year. Oh yeah. We're starting off in England, England. going to Waxstock, what, June 5th? Yep. We're heading across the pond to get some tea and crumpets. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm very bad at accents, by the way, people. I'm so sorry. But no, tell them about Waxstock, what that's all about. Okay, Waxstock is, um, it's a car show for detailers and car enthusiasts. It's a one-day event that takes place in Coventry the, in the UK. Put on by... Uh, it's put on by uh, uh, Dodo Juice. It's some really good friends of ours, PJ yeah. and Dom. Yeah, PJ and Dom, the owners of Dodo Juice. And uh, we, we've been to one of these events before. But what's really nice about this is because it's a one-day event, the energy level there is just incredible. There's just so many people that are there passionate about detailing, passionate about cars. And uh, Yancey, I will be there uh, running the 3D booth. I'll also be spending some time in the Flex booth. Uh, it's a good time. If you're in the UK and you're watching this, please stop on by and say hi. But that's where we're going to start out as Wax Talk. And After there may be more added onto that. Stay tuned to that Bat Channel. Well, we're trying to work uh, up a class. Yeah, we're, we're trying to work the class up. So. Uh, yeah, Kelly Harris, uh, KDS Detailing, has offered this classroom. So now we're just trying to get the logistics down as to what day to do the class before wax stock or after wax stock. And then we'll announce that. And again, if you're in the UK, please try to get to that class. That'll be a lot of fun, especially with Kelly there. Exactly. And then... We come back, I'm trying to find the dates really fast. Oh no, I just had them. Uh, it, it's uh, up in Canada. Oh, it's in Canada. It's in Canada. It's, it's the Berlin Classic. The Berlin Classic. It's a huge three day car show. Yes, it is. And why can't I find it? Oh, I can't. Oh man. I, I think the dates for that are August. It's in August, it's if in I remember August. correctly. And then we go back across the pond. We to go Germany. to Auto Mechanica. Auto Mechanica in Germany. Now, Auto Mechanica is kind of like our SEMA, only on steroids. <laughs> it's a, I think it's a five or six day show. It's huge. And Yancey and I have also been to the Auto Mechanica show in Germany. Um, it, it takes a lot of walking to try to get everything in in two or three days. There's just so much to see. But we're going to have a 3D booth there, and uh, we'll have a demo panel and the complete line of 3D products. So if you attend Auto Mechanica, please be sure to stop by the 3D booth and say hi. Okay, I got dates. All right, Canada, the Berlin Classic is August 5th through the 7th, which is, if I remember correctly, in Toronto. And then Germany Auto Mechanica is September 13th through the 17th. And then we fly back. Well, obviously we'd be back already, <laughs> but uh, then we'll be back out at the Vegas for SEMA. the SEMA show. Yeah, SEMA was great this last year. It was the first year since COVID that opened up. Our booth was just packed it for the rocking. entire four days. It was rough. Uh, it was a lot of fun. You know, I've been going to SEMA, I think for 18 or 19 years now. So. Uh, it's always great to meet people that you've met over the years, plus anybody new that wants to come on by and say hi. And of course, check out the 3D products. We always have black demo hoods. You know, we can show you everything. Starting yeah, get from get in there and put your hands on it. Best way to do, yeah, figure it out. Hands on, yeah. So it's a great booth. It's a great booth experience to go by the 3D booth. Yeah, if you haven't figured out Mike by now, he's very hands on. He likes people to be hands on. So if you ever see us out in an event, I guarantee you there will be a polisher, there will be some sort of chemical, something, some product that you can get your hands well, on. Well, for our, our 3D classes here, you know, uh, Flex, they stepped up to the plate and they provided us free, no charge, 72 polishers. Well, um, I got it. All right, you look at that camera, yeah. camera one. So if you see on the back behind Mike and off to your right hand side of the screen, the big open cabinets, they are slap full of pla uh, flex tools. Yep. Best tools in the industry, in my opinion, and experience. Camera so. two. So. All right, so now with that being said, I think we did all of our little things. Uh, if you do have any questions about 505 or Speed or any of the other 3D products, you can always reach out to Mike and I both. We're on the Detailing Society by, as a Facebook group. Yep. We hang out on the YouTube channel. 
uh, Instagram. You can hit us up questions over there. We'll be happy to help you out. But so with that, I am going to peruse through some of your guys' comments here and mm -hmm. see what we got going on. Uh, all right, we got visit Lithuania, uh, Lithuania also. 3D Baltics. That's I. Wow, Lucas. I'm gonna call you by your last name, Lucas. Uh, that would be a cool one to go to, wouldn't you think? What's that? Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. We have Richard, our friend Richard. Thank you for tuning in, Richard. Uh, both video and sound are very good online. No echoey, echoing, and the piano keys on the wall. Yeah, this is a sound absorbing. Yeah. You should have heard it in here first, people. It was. <laughs> yeah, you can't hear yourself think. Uh, Gabrielle would love to go one day. You know, we'd be happy to have you down here. I mean, you know, the, the three day classes I put on behind the scenes, what people don't see is it actually takes a lot of work to get the really cool cars I get down here for you to train on. Um, when it comes to the sanding, there's, there's nobody in the industry that brings in other guys, street rods for complete strangers to sand down and buff out. So there's a lot of trust in our relationships here because think about it if you just had a 1965 mustang that you spent three years restoring and you got a custom paint job would you let strangers sand it down and buff it out the answer is no no but i have really good relationships with street rod guys and they know that when they let us have their cars for my classes they come out right they come out tight no problems oh so, you're a poet so it's a it's a fun class and of course i i talked about the boats you know for this next class i got a 26 foot regulator and a 21 foot trophy the trophy's dark green, it's turned white with oxidation. The regulator's dark blue. It's turned light white with oxidation, but also has a lot of holograms from the people that have used caveman techniques to buff it out in the past and left it all butchered. Well, that's why we're here. We're that's, here to teach yeah. them. Okay, let me go down some of these comments sure. really fast. All right, Aesthetic Cartel, nice to meet you tonight. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, we have Sebastian CS. You've been talking back and forth with him. Hey, Sebastian. Uh, good luck, guys. Thank you very much. We have Sirkin Asabi. Hello, Turkey. I want to say that's what he's saying. It has a little dots on there. Richard, <laughs> you already gave us a little shout out. Thank you very much. Uh, Jerry O'Brien. Hey, Mike. Hey, Anthony. Hey, Jerry. Hey, Jerry. Thanks for tuning back in with us over here. Uh, we have Mario. Mario, sorry. Greetings, guys. Uh, we have Marta. Thanks. A lot of you guys are saying thank you. Hi, and glad to be back. I am, believe me, we're glad to be back. Yeah. Uh, Mary Carmen. Hi, master. I'm your big fan. You have a big fan. <laughs> you know, next week, uh, I, we haven't picked a topic yet, but I was thinking about doing nanopails. Nanopails no, are beat it up. I, I, all right. There'll be a poll on this comments. Nanopail or beat it up. What would you guys rather see? No, uh, we, we'll leave Thursday. it up to you guys. Yep. All right, uh, then she loves ACI, I mean, ACA 510. That's good stuff. Oh man, it's amazing. Uh, okay, this must have been when you're running your polisher. At this time, you're probably 22 minutes into the video. So you are probably on, just give them how fast you're doing the, that, this is going to Craig. How fast were you running the rotary polisher on? I was on speed six after I spread my product down. Okay, then when you went to the, the finisher? Uh, speed six also. Okay, then yeah, If the tools went to 11. He would go to 11. I'd people. go to 11. Now, now, when you're using the cordless PE14, um, it's, it has a different um, operating speed ranges than the corded style. But for my personal buffing style and stuff like this, after I spin my product up, I go to the five or six, you know, uh, with the wool pad, traditional wool cutting pad. Uh, for the cordless beast, um, you know, most of the time I take a, wrap a piece of tape around the uh, speed setting adjuster to keep it on the six all the time. Cause it's, uh, Lock it in. it's easy to bump it down slower. And I need all the speed because I'm doing polishing work with the cordless tool. It's a great tool. The batteries last great. Uh, and same thing with the beast. Actually, I'm on six. I guess I'm on six all the time. <laughs> I just run it <laughs> flat out. <laughs> all right. That's a good thing that you have like a normal daily driver. If you had like my car, you might be running that flat out the entire time. Yeah. Okay. So Jerry O'Brien, how coarse is that purple pad? How porous is it? Coarse. Oh, coarse. 
Uh, the polishing pad is is like any other polishing pad. It has maybe just a tick compared more cut. to Lake Country Lake or Country, Buffington. a little bit more cut to it. The the light purple has a little bit more cut, I'd say, than the the normal white Lake Country polishing pad. This dark purple pad here is pretty sharp. That's how you would define a cutting pad. Is the sh you take your clean hand, you run it across the surface, you can actually feel a sharpness to it. That's what makes a cutting pad a cutting pad versus you know this finishing pad. When I run my hands across, it's just very very soft. So. Oh, I am so in love with Facebook and their, what do you call it, see translations. All right, Uger, I probably butchered your name, I'm sorry, Ugar. Uh, I am using 3D ACA 500, 3D 8AT 502 front, 400 epoxy, very nice. Yeah, and, and we'll have classes on those products. You know, recently I did a 2018 black Shelby, I used the 500 on it. Uh, recently, I did an AMG black Mercedes Benz. I used the 501 and the 502 on it. And I, you know, you, I just, you never have a bad experience with any of the abrasive compounds or polishes from 3D. They cut fast, uh, low dusting, long open time, which means long buffing cycle, uh, easy wipe off, and uh, flawless results. I mean, they're very consistent. I was once told one time the hardest thing about creating a compound or a AIO or a polish formula is creating it to work on a wide spectrum of paint systems. Okay, soft paint, hard paint, new paint, old paint. Um, that's the hardest part about creating a good formula. So it's, it works on a wide, because you know the people that make this, they don't know what we're gonna be working on. And like in this case, this is an old car. Okay, uh, so. I'm just gonna sure. get a speed round. We yeah. got 15 more minutes before Instagram ends. So okay. uh, did 3D change the name of HD Speed? Yes. yes, they used to, at one point they launched a, uh, the consumer line, um, they added the HD to the name. So it was high definition or HD Speed. And what happened is that just caused confusion. So they just went back to the, the simple name of just speed. Same thing with Poxy, it was HD Poxy. Now it's just Poxy. And I think one was in there too, HD, high definition yeah, one. It, it, now it's just one. Try to keep it simple. That's our motto. It confused, it, it confused yeah. some people. Detailing okay. made simple. Okay, now, uh, Fantino, Mata, yeah. Nano pills? No, nano pails. Do you have one back there that you can grab real quick? I don't think so, it's all, all up right. front. Yeah. All right. What they are is they're conde uh, not condensed. Um, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Concentrated. Concentrated. They're, they're homogenized hey, products. So, well, the benefits of the HD Nanopel or the 3D Nanopel system is they're actually um, they're actually formulated. They're a concentrate, and they come with a a pump that attaches to the top, and the pump will put three quarters of an ounce into a 32 ounce bottle and then you fill the rest with water. Yeah. So there's no diluting, there's no mixing, you don't gotta do any math, it's just one pump, add water, and And go. what, it makes five gallons, correct? Yeah, one nano pill yeah. will make five gallons. Which is just a little bit, it's about the height of the, the speed bottles over there is just a little bit wider. Yeah, and, and, and this is a perfect uh, line of products for mobile detailers because you don't gotta pack all that weight in your mobile uh, vehicle. Okay, let me get, now we're flipping over into the YouTube. Um, this is one thing that I don't like about this new software. It's like all my chats are not unified. So yeah. eh, it's half of 150 the other. I get more, but I get less though. Eh. Okay, <laughs> Moises Paris, finally. Yes, yeah. yes, did you miss us? I'm waiting, did you? Did you really? Yeah. Uh, we got Mig M, howdy y'all. We have Tugar, this guy has forgotten more than most will ever know. Appreciate the free education. Thank you. He was talking about me, not you. Oh, gotcha. No, no he was talking about you. Uh, we got Contra Beta, yo. Yeah. So happy to see you guys. You know, there's, there's, a, there's, there's a lot of different social media touch points you can go to to get information, and I encourage you to go to all of them. I would say one of the things that I bring to the table is a very, uh, uh, just a, a wide breadth of background experience. Yes, okay? you do. So, I'm not just a guy that teaches classes. I detail cars and I've been doing it since, I hate to say this, the 70s. So <laughs> yeah. there's a lot of times that I can say, I've been there, done that. And so it's easy for me to talk about any topic because I've actually done it. You know, where someone maybe that's newer or younger, they just don't have that experience level. So that's the one thing I'd say I bring to the table is a lot of experience. Okay, let me speed round through some of these. Uh, Danik95, great time. Great time for my lunch break. He must be out in California area. <laughs> Just did a one-step with speed, flex 30 for one, and polishing pad on a Chrysler 300. Got 
a 200 up next. All right, see, get in, get out. Yeah. That, there's that light again. That's one thing that we are fixing is our energy saving energy saving light sensors they, they're they're good in theory yeah but when you're trying to do stuff video doesn't it, work, yeah. it doesn't work you know real quick i also want to touch on the fact that i've seen people um, uh, state that these products have fillers there's no fillers in any of the 3d compounds polishes or aios and, and anybody that wants to say that, what I'd like to see is your lab coat from the 3D laboratory or your pay stub where you worked at 3D so you actually know this information. When people just throw that out there, please, you know, don't believe everything you see on the internet. Yeah, ask There's us. no fillers in these. And, and any AIO that works means it's leaving some wax behind. If you're putting wax on the car, it's coating over. Isn't the whole idea of wax on the car to put a layer of wax on the paint, a layer of protective wax? Well, if you're putting a layer over, it can't help but to fill in because it's laying over the surface. So most of the people I find talking about fillers uh, don't really know what they're talking about. Right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, 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 I adapt it. And like, I, like I always tell people, it's like, look, go to, uh, go somewhere where your question, we can answer it. If you're having that question, other people out there are yeah. having that question and let us put it on a social platform so we can get it out there. Yeah. And we're always happy to, you know, <laughs> take on your questions. Sure. And I if we don't know the answer, yeah. we'll get it. Yeah. I, I go straight to the horse and yeah. I, I get it from Tunch. You go to the horse, <laughs> I go to the canvas. But, you know, I would say the most abused terms in our industry right now are fillers and graphene. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Oh, and, God. and as far as not doing correction, are you kidding me? I've corrected not filled in, corrected so many abused cars with these products. I've seen people make the comments that, oh, it's just gonna mask the defects. Well, if it's masking the defect, then you're not using the right tool or the right pad or the right technique. The abrasive technology in these products will remove swirls and scratches, not just mask them. Agreed, agreed. Yeah. Okay, we got nine minutes. Let me just speed round through a couple. Sure. I will throw it to you when it's a question. Okay. Uh, and just speed round answers. We all know how his speed round <laughs> answers are. Okay, country, we really missed the type of videos from you guys. Any detailing classes in LA anytime soon? Stay tuned. That is in the works. Uh, oh, hey, and Mike and Yancey, I love 520. I did a Bentley with it yesterday. 520 is good stuff. Nice, it's a finishing polish. It's a, actually post offers, pictures, people. It's a good product, yeah. It's post offers these a lot of cuts. Yeah, post these pictures. Go to our detailing, I mean, detailing society and post pictures or our Facebook. Uh, we love seeing your work. Uh, Rudy Fernandez with 510, can you cut the dark purple cutting pad or do you recommend the wool pad? It just depends on what you're gonna do. Um, anytime I've got heavy defects removed, I'm going to a rotor at the wool, but you can use the 510 with a foam cutting pad on a DA. So, okay, I, I, I just had a text come in through, uh, I think he heard us talking about him. Who's that? Who do, who do you think? Right. Tunch. Tunch, the Tunster. Uh, <laughs> he, uh, he comes in, the dynamic duo. Yeah. So, you know, uh, here's something I'd like to clear up. A lot of people aren't sure how to say his name. It's not Tunch, it's Tunch. Tunch. Okay, uh, we got Russ. I've missed you guys on Thursday. It's good to see you all again. Russ. We're glad to be back. We got Grant. Good morning, boys. Peace up. There, I'm in the video now. Uh, Dan, what polishing pad did you use with speed? I just used a foam polishing pad, so not a cutting pad, yeah, not purple. a finishing pad, but right in that sweet spot in the middle, just a foam polishing pad. Okay, we got a really good question right here. We get asked this a lot. Moises Perez, what rotary would you recommend for a beginner? Uh, gosh, I'm always going to recommend the Flex PE14, either corded or cordless. I'll, I'll tell you, um, I started out in this industry with a rotary, so I, I, I've seen the entire spectrum of all the different tools. But every time I go to use a rotary nowadays, whether it's on a boat or anything, I'm grabbing the PE14, the cordless P14. The, the ability to work with a cordless and a, a rotary without the cord, uh, it's just- it's, it's nice. Yeah, it's just <laughs> nice. You know? Okay, uh, I'm gonna do a couple things. Uh, what, really quick, one more question for you. I have a few people asking, what is the difference, the main difference between 505 and speed? Okay, so the primary difference- You got that, like a minute to The say primary this. difference that you would notice is this is gonna offer more cut, faster cut, more cut. That's the primary difference. They're, they're both AIOs. They both use Montan wax for protection. Uh, they both use amazing abrasive technology. You're just gonna get a little more cut with the 505. If you're happy with speed, keep using it. 
Right. So what I do, guys, is I run into a lot of guys that are tackling really neglected paint like this and they want more cut. One of the things they could do is if they haven't already is get a gear driven orbital. That's going to increase the cut of whatever you use, yes. you know, so use the right tool. Yeah, use the right just, tool. you know, make the investment, get a beast, get one of the beast tools. You'll never regret it. OK, uh, beat it up. All right. We have people saying beat it up. We have people saying nano pails. OK. Now, I'm just going to do a, a little country recap. Do I have lights turning off again? All right, we have people tuning in from Russia, Bolivia, Venezuela, Lithuania, obviously the United States. Uh, you know, wh wherever you guys are at in the world, if you're not in the United States, give us a little shout out. You know, hey, hi from here. We love seeing where all you guys are at because what we're going to do is we're gonna, on one of our walls, we're going to put a map of the world and everywhere that we've touched, we're going to put a little pin in there. So that's that's my little. It'll become a wall prop. of pins, right? A wall of pins. Yes. Okay. We'll do Yancy. I'll have to ask the shop owner to make sure it's okay. I don't remember what you were asking me. I'm in Michigan, Yancy. Okay. All right. Now, do 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 do. Then let me see here. What's the thoughts on Euro 550 pad with speed? The Euro. Uh, the, I guess that's Buff and Shine. Oh, uh, no, that'd be Lake uh, Rupes, the U-R-O, their, their pad. Oh, their Euro pad? No, Euro no, pad no, is or, late, or, is that late, or is that late? Here's the deal. When it comes to pad choice, if it's a microfiber pad and you're trying to do a one-step, just do a test spot first, inspect it closely, and make sure the fibers of the microfiber pad, no matter what the brand, aren't cutting the paint, leaving micromarring. That's the problem you'll run into with the microfiber pad. You know, I was at uh, Meguiar's when they developed and introduced the microfiber DA system. And a lot of people don't know the history. I know the complete history, but the whole reason behind that was to get guys off rotaries so they weren't putting holograms in and burning edges. And in order to do that, they needed to amp up the cut you could get from a free spinning DA. And to do that, they introduced a fiber pad. So the fiber pad always offers more cut, but the problem is because it offers more cut, it also has a tendency to leave micro marring in the paint. So if the whole goal is to do a one step, do a test spot first and make sure you're not leaving micro marring. If you are, step it down to something like a foam polishing pad. Okay. And we have Tunch. He just texted me and he told me that also 505 is body shop safe. Oh yeah. And everything that you see in a green bottle is body shop, is safe. Body shop safe. That is our body shop line. Yep. And so that if you're working in that industry where you need to paint and you have to have, you know, where you don't want to get fish eyes all over your stuff, Yes. That is the stuff that yep. you would be using. But you can still use it as a consumer. Yeah, that, that's one of the things I wanted to show people is even though this is in the body shop line, a lot of detailers and Or normal people. Normal people might actually like the extra cut they get from 505. Oh, we have Belgium in here now too. We have Belgium, good ingredients from Belgium. I like the combo of speed and one. Gretz David from Detail, I can't say your name. One is another amazing product. It uses amazing abrasive technology. It's a hybrid compound polish. Okay, so with that being said, I have three minutes to do a wrap because okay. Instagram always has to be that one that only allows you an hour. Yep. So like we said before, if you'd like to see something next week, we're either between the nano pails, not pills, nano pails, or beat it up. Post in the comments here, yep. even on the replays, post it what you'd rather see, and that's the video that we'll do. And if you have any other ideas for videos that you would like to see Mike and I do, or a demonstration that you'd like to see Mike do, and I'll just film it so you guys can learn from it, hit us up. We're always at uh, Detailing Society by 3D. We're on uh, Facebook, we're on YouTube, we're on Instagram. Mike's got a forum going on over there. Was it 3D Detail Talk? 3D Detail Talk.com. Right. And always Mike's email. You can send him an email. Just look us up. You type our name in there, you'll find us. I guarantee it. Yep. So with that, how did you think the first day went? The first, oh, I, I felt a little rusty. I yeah, felt a little you know, rusty. We got to shake a little you know, things the, out. This car is really in bad shape, but you know, again, this shows you the power of a good one step. You know, we're never going to make this car look great. It's an old car, but I'll tell you when the owner gets this back, he's going to think we painted the hood. I, the whole I, car. I, I, I totally we do have to do the whole car, by the way. Yes. And <laughs> I was about ready to spill over that before I say bye to everybody is as soon as we're done here, we're getting my camera stuff out and we invited some people to come down and help us kind of open up the garage. T-Nog is what you're calling T -Nog. it? T-Nog. Thursday night open garage here at 3D Garage in Sewer, Florida. Yeah, and we're going to be starting them. Tonight. What? I know, but are yeah. we doing a weekly, bi-weekly? Weekly. Weekly? Bi yeah, every Thursday night. If you're in the area, swing on by. I've always got something. You can come down and try out all the 3D products, play with Flex Tools. 
Uh, just visit the place. You know? Yeah, and if you're a car club looking to teach your members, this is a good, good way to get in, talk with us. We're, we're always yeah. looking for cars, man. I mean, always looking for cars. So with that being said, I got one minute left. So like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, like, share, and subscribe, ring the bell, just follow us. You know, it helps us out tremendously, you know, that darn algorithm and everything. And with that, anything else that you have to say, Mike? No, just thanks for tuning in. This is uh, number one is in the books, and uh, next week will be number two. All right. We see you next time.